So let me explain what's going on here. Well, you guys may have seen my recent videos on DATV, especially transmitting up to QA100 satellite. And you may have seen all the gubbings and equipment all kind of sprawled out in the uh, conservatory. Well, my idea is to put it all in a, in a box, this box. And although it looks kind of a, a bit of a mess at the moment, it's because I'm still kind of in the building stage. So this is going to be a bit of a part one of the video. Now, there's quite a lot going on here. So let me explain what's actually happening. So over on the right hand side here, uh, I've got a Pluto, which is going to be used for transmit on DATV. So this would be used for transmitting on that on digital television. Um, that then goes into the uh, preamp. So it takes it up to about 18 milliwatts. And then there's a connector on the back of this 2U uh, empty rack sort of chassis that I purchased. It was quite expensive, actually. But I, I thought it was about the right size for everything. So that's the transmit uh, transmitter side of things. Now, I will use this for receive, but I'll talk that, about that in a moment. So the receive part for DATV will be this. Now, this is the mini tuner, and I've got a dedicated video on my channel all about this uh, and how, how I built it and how it's working. So let's just talk about DATV to start off with. OK, so the, you've got the Pluto for transmit. That goes out and then that connects to the amplifier. You've all seen the amplifier in the other video. Uh, and the receive is, is here. Now, because this is all going to be mounted somewhere else, it's all going to be working over Ethernet. So I've got an Ethernet socket on the back and it goes into this hub here. This is just an Ethernet switch. Very cheap. It's about £8 off of Amazon uh, made by TP-Link. Uh, and this is going to be feeding three devices. So it's going to have the Pluto on network. It's also going to have uh, Arduino on network, which I'll talk about in a minute, and then a Raspberry Pi on network. So still talking about DATV, um, we need a way of getting the signal from here back to the shack. So this is plugged into a Raspberry Pi 3 which runs the long mind server software. And then I use the long mind client on the computer. So that's viewing and then transmitting is done with um, DATV easy in combination with OBS. Now I'll do a full video on how all the software works once I've got it finished and working. So that's what the Pi is for. The Pi is really for running the uh, DATV receiving software which is great um, because then this brings in um, a, a Raspberry Pi into the whole system, which I can use for other things. So the big power supply, which is just off camera up here, that's a 28 volt, 28 volt, 34 amp power supply. That's going to be bolted in here. That will then have 28 volts going off to this, these two big power connections, which I'll connect to the amp and then the 28 volts will also go to a step down, uh, not this, this is actually a step up. I put the wrong one in, so I've I had to order a step down. So I'll step it down to 18 volts. Then I'll step it down again to 12 volts and to 5 volts. And the reason for that is because as well as being able to do DATV on this system, I want to also use, use it for narrowband. So what I can do is the Pluto, the, the Pluto runs special firmware for DATV so that it receives video packets over UDP. But through the web dashboard, you can change it so it's in pass through mode. And when it's in pass through mode, you can just connect to it over IP from SDR console. And then when it's in that mode, you will then use the receive side of the Pluto as well. So that's great. So I've got one. Uh, connection coming in on the back, which comes to here, and this is the LMB. 
Now, when you're using DATV, it's horizontal polarization. So you need to feed the LMB with like 18 volts, which is why I'm going to step down to an 18 volt from 28 to 18 volts first. And then if I want to use the narrowband transponder section, um, then that requires vertical polarization. So the LMB then needs 12 volts. So hence why I've got a 12 volt step down. That step down 12 volt will also power this, which is the uh, mini tuner. Uh, it will also power the Arduino, which has got an ethernet shield. And I'll talk about that in a moment. So, <laughs> OK, so what we're going to have is we're going to have two scenarios. We're going to have a scenario where we're going to need 18 volts to put the LMB into horizontal polarization. And then we're going to have another scenario where we need 12 volts. But we've got our two feeds. So we've got our 12 volt and 18 volt feed once I've installed the power section here. And to switch it between the two, I'm going to use a relay. I have two voltage in inputs into the relay and then one of the pins then will go out to the bias T which is this little device here um, and then the Arduino will control the relays now I'll show you that in a minute because that's pretty cool so because I've got the Ethernet shield on top of the Arduino I can create a web server which will serve up a control panel for this which is awesome what I'll also be using the relay board for as well, as well as switching the voltage on the bias T between 18 and 12 volts for horizontal and vertical polarization. I'll also use the relay to power the preamp over here. This, this is the preamp here. Um, and that requires 12 volts. So one of the one of the relays here will literally just turn the power on and off to the preamp. And and we do that because when we're encoding video for DATV, we can leave the Pluto running, we can leave our encoding software running, but to dekey, we literally just have to turn the power off to the preamp. Um, and then there's nothing going out to the amplifier. So everything is on apart from apart from the uh, preamp so that's great and obviously because this relay board is connected to the arduino we can have a uh, control of that on a web interface and as i said i'll show you that again in a moment okay so i hope you're with me on all this <laughs> it's quite complicated but it's it's not it is but it's not um then what we've got is this now this is just uh, uh it's an rf switch now I haven't I've tested it but I haven't tested it properly yet so I'm not too sure if I'm going to use this if I don't use this then I use a relay and the reason for this is because we have the RF so we've got the bias T for the voltage for the LMB here but then we've got the RF from the LMB so whether it's going to be we'll be receiving DATV or we're going to be receiving SSB narrowband now for SSB narrowband we need the LMB RF to go to the receive the RX on the Pluto, which is over there. Then when we're on DAT TV or DATV, I don't know why I say DAT TV, but it's DATV, the RF needs to go to the tuner here, this module. So again, it's gonna be either this controlled by an Arduino, which is basically one in and two out. So it's got an input and then you use uh, the digital pins on the Arduino to control which port it goes to. So the output from the bias T will go to the input of here, the the Arduino will control whether it goes to here or to over there um, to the to the Pluto input. But like I said, I'm not too sure if I'm going to use that yet. I need to actually I've tested it um, and I've got it working with the Arduino. However, I'm just not too sure on how good the isolation is between the two ports. So if it doesn't work, if it doesn't work well or if I see any kind of um, loss, insertion loss or masses of insertion loss, um, I don't think it should be. I think it was like point, point 0.6 up to a gig or something like that. And we're using an IF of around 740, 45 megahertz. So it should be OK. But if not, then I'll, I'll have to stick it through a relay, um, which, um, again, will be um, RF output into a center pin and then literally a relay controlled by the Arduino to switch the out, uh, 
be input to here or be um, Pluto. OK, so what you might also see over here is a uh, Leo Bodner. So this is a uh, mini GPS reference clock. And this is configured for 40 megahertz uh, with a GPS antenna connection on the back. Uh, it's not connected at the moment, but this connects to the Pluto board. I've got a video dedicated all about this on the channel. If you want to go and view it and learn how to set it up and that plugs onto the onto the board that gives uh, ultimate stability on on the Pluto. However, I thought it'd be really cool because I'm designing a web interface um, so that I can see things so I can control um, the relays, for example. Um, the other function of the Arduino will be to use voltage dividers to measure the voltage for each of the stages. So I'm going to have a voltage divider for the 28 volts, uh, 12 volts, 18 volts and 5 volts because obviously we're going to need 5 volts for um, the Raspberry Pi. We need 5 volts for the Pluto and 5 volts to power the hub at the back. So I'm going to have a voltage divider for each of those and they will be fed into the analog pins on the Arduino, which basically means I can get these really nice, cool looking dials and, and, meet, and meters on on the web page and they'll be live so if a voltage changes then that's great um, but back to the GPS uh, the Leo Bodner um, it's you, once you've programmed it on your PC that's it you can just leave it running but I thought to myself well why not see if we could take the data from the Leo Bodner things like um, PLL lock and satellite lock so you know to make sure that it's got satellite lock basically because it needs a satellite lock to be able to produce the 40 meg signal so i've plugged the um, power connection which is actually the communications connection also into the mini usb of the leo bodner that then goes over and plugs into a usb on the pi now using a clever piece of python script I can query um, the status of the mini GPS. And then what I can do is then squirt that information from the Pi to the Arduino. Um, now you do have to use, if, if you're gonna serial interface the Pi with the Arduino, then you need to use a TTL converter because the digital pins on the Pi are three, three volts three. Um, and on the Arduino, they're five volts. So you just use a simple um, TTL converter. So it's very basic stuff. Uh, and you just literally um, connect the TX to the RX and the RX to the TX um, between, between the TTL converter. So that's great. We've got all that information um, going into, into here. I'm also going to be, so as well as voltage dividers going into the Arduino, I've also got some, I've got a thermistor, which will go onto the heat sink of the amplifier. That will give me the temperature of the amplifier, um, or at least the temperature of the heat sink. I may put a, um, sen sensor, a temperature sensor inside this box as well, because of, because it will have a lid on it. Um, and the only cooling will be the cooling fans in the, in the power supply. I might put a couple of fans on the side. This case has got grills in the side, so I should be able to get some kind of airflow through it. So yes, so there we go. So if we have a quick look, I'll show you the, the script running. So this script here uh, on the left, this is uh, just VNC'd into the Pi, uh, and this is running a script. Um, so every few seconds, it will read the status of the Leo Bodner. It will then take that to, um, take that data and then it will squirt it over to the Arduino. I've just got a sample application running at the moment on the Arduino um, just to uh, just for testing purposes. And and then eventually what I'll do is on this screen here, this is the uh, this is going to be the dashboard. So all these dials will show so temperature, uh, show the different voltages for each stage. Um, I've then got the four switches down at the bottom. Now I'm only going to be using three of them. I've thought of a use of the fourth one. I've put it there just so that I've 
as I've got four relays on the relay board. Um, and then I'll probably have, I'll create another little section, a uh, little update, little little area on the dashboard where it will update and show um, maybe like a green or, or a green and red sort of LED to show PLL lock and uh, satellite lock as well. So yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting project. So this is part one. I'm sorry if I've bored you, but it's very interesting and uh, it's taken a, a, a lot of my time at the moment and I'm really enjoying it. Uh, I just hope that it all works perfectly when I've finished. Um, just to talk about the rear pins, I'm not, some of you might ask what's on the back. So the preamp goes to an N-type. Um, the... Um, GPS connection and GPS antennas, just an SMA, and then the uh, bias T on the other side of here is an F-type connection. Then these are just two big power connections. I need to drill another hole here at some point on the left side of the of the uh, packing, uh, of left side of the backing here, um, so that I can put a mains plug uh, socket, so uh, fused as well, so it will then go straight into the power supply. So there we go, guys. Anyway, this is like a beginning part one of my build. And I'll, if you're interested, I will document it and, uh, well, show you guys everything as I go along. All right. Take care. See you in the next video.